Project Gemini, two weeks in space. This morning, the launch of Gemini 6. Now from the CBS News Space Center in New York, Walter Cronkite. Good morning, everyone. This ought to be our most exciting day in space. Perhaps succeeded only by the very first the space flights. But this is the day when uh, Shira and Stafford are scheduled to go up just 53 minutes from now in Gemini 6 to pursue and catch and finally rendezvous with Gemini 7, which has been up for... One minute, 20... Minus one minute seconds. and 20 seconds. As we lead up to the final moments of launch, to repeat an earlier announcement, we will have ignition at zero, and some three seconds after ignition, the launch vehicle will lift off on the start of the Gemini 6 flight. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. T-minus 60. T-minus 50. Astronaut Girard making some final comm checks. T-minus 40 seconds and counting. During the final 10 seconds of the count, astronaut Alan Bean will give the count to the astronauts in the spacecraft. T minus 30. T minus 25 seconds and counting. The three valves on the launch vehicle have been opened. This permits the propellants to come down just above the thrust chamber. T minus 15 seconds and counting. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, zero. Now we've got, we've got a shutdown. No lift off. The engines have shut down. Fuel pressure is lowering while it's your eyes is. Apparently in safe condition. Critical moment now, getting the fuel pressure down. The oxidizer pressure lowering nicely. Blockhouse is asking for a readout on all tank pressures. Any malfunction that would have kept the ship from getting into orbit would have caused those engines to shut down on the pad and something did occur. Immediately after ignition, as you saw, the engine simply burst once and then shut down. An automatic shutdown. Elliot C is putting in a call to seven to advise them that we will not have a liftoff. Frank Mormon says, Roger, we saw it. We saw it light up. We saw it shut down. By golly, Gemini 7, up there above the Cape, saw what we saw here, of course, at 185 miles distance. He assures uh, Frank Warman that everything's still okay on the ground here, and we'll keep him advised. All safety features have been built into these rockets, of course, but once you have an ignition like that, and fuel has begun to pour into the thrust chambers, and have, there is a shutdown, there is always danger and concern. Until the fuel pressure has been brought back to normal, until the it is sure that the valves are cleared of fuel coming down into the combustion chamber, uh, there will be uh, some concern, crossed fingers. And then, of course, and uh, Tom Stafford, Stafford and Wally Shira talking now about what they saw at the moment of ignition and then how they saw the various pressure gauges and dials start, start dropping just as we did here in Houston and as I'm sure they did in the blockhouse. This is of course the first time that this has happened in our manned space this shutdown program. would have come before 1.6 seconds. It's approximately at that point where we reach 77% of a full thrust and beyond that point uh, an on-the-pad shutdown is not possible. We have 
not had this in the Mercury nor the Gemini program. A lot of unmanned vehicles have had shutdowns on the pad. It's not an unheard of thing in our missile program, but it is unprecedented in the manned space program and causes this concern.